Hey everybody, it's uh, Eric again over at Learn Max, and uh, I decided to take another look over at our friends at MaxForLive.com at some uh, interesting devices that are going on over there. And I wanted to look particularly at something that involved jitter. Uh, I've got a lot of people asking me about, uh, you know, when am I going to do something talking about jitter? So I figured I'd take a shortcut and show you something that's already been made. It's a really cool uh, Max for Live device called Motion Mod, and it's version 1.0 from uh, the author is uh, Zeal TV, and you can find it uh, over on uh, MaxForLive.com, and hopefully there'll be a link over there. So anyway. Um, what's going on? Okay, so let's see. Let's take a look over here quickly. This is uh, our our, uh, our patcher window, and also you can see the auto filter kind of jumping up and down. I have some kind of cool sci-fi uh, stuff going on. You can see it's kind of triggered by my hand motions. Kind of neat, right? So I have a, a, an auto filter basically on one of the returns, and uh, this way I have that just most of my audio passing through that uh, return track, and I have uh, my parameter being modulated by the My Motion mod, and it's My Motion mod here. Just because I did a couple of tweaks so we can kind of see what's going on inside a little bit, but really, um, Zeal TV, I, I, I apologize for kind of tweaking things a little bit here, but I just needed it to kind of uh, follow through. So okay, uh, it's there's not a lot actually inside here. Uh, it's it's a little bit easier, you know. A lot of people are kind of scared about jitter, but there's not that much crazy stuff going on. You have to just deal with matrices as opposed to uh, dealing just with uh, 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 straight kind of audio signals. And matrices are just basically two by two, not two by two. What am I saying? Two dimensional uh, arrays of of numbers. In this case, they're going to wind up being pixels. Okay, so let's take a look at what's going on here. All right, so first off we have a load bang, and what the load bang does is basically that gets, that's a bang that occurs when the device is first loaded. So it kind of kicks everything off, and uh, it toggles this, starts a metronome off, a uh, five millisecond metronome. It also calls the open, uh, it sends a message open over to JITQT grab, and what that is is a jitter quick time grabber. And that, uh, by default, is going to just grab the first uh, grabber device it can. I happen to have my DV cam uh, on right now, so it finds that. And it sets it up in 640 by 480 mode. So it grabs a frame uh, every 5 milliseconds. This next thing it does is it converts that JIT.RGB to Luma. It converts the color image to a Luma image, so it's just a brightness image. And then it performs uh, some... Uh, matrix operations on them. You see we have JIT op, JIT op, JIT slide, these things. And this is where I took some liberties and I, I created these three little uh, jitter windows over here so I could kind of see what each stage was doing. So you can see the kind of the processed inputs here, right? All the stages before it gets to my final version. So in the first one, you see uh, the result of the JIT op at op abs diff. So it's taking an absolute difference uh, of the two frames. Basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to get motion, the difference, pixels that are changing from the last picture to the current picture. So if I stop moving, I get no pixels because no pixels have changed since the last image. You can see I'm, I'm kind of moving a little bit here so things start to come through. So the first abs diff, that tries to get rid of all the stuff that hasn't changed. And then uh, he's got a, a couple of different thresholding functions in here. He says, oh, okay, is the difference greater than whatever this threshold is? He has a live dial, and you can see the, the number here. He feeds that in. So that's going to get a, 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 a thresholded value. And then he uses JIT.slide. What JIT.slide does, it's sort of a temporal blur. You can kind of see the results in the, the final one there. See that kind of this blurry one up here. Watch as I move my mouse and kind of see what's going on. So it's basically kind of averaging a group of frames together uh, to, to kind of smooth things out, kind of uh, give us a you know, motion across a group of frames. And then it uses that value and it has, it looks like a fixed uh, threshold here, 0.3. All right, so we wind up with this really nice, uh, this nice uh, image down here. And then what it does is it uses this object, the JIT.3M. And what that is doing, it takes the, uh, it basically returns the minimum, the mean, and the maximum values of uh, the, the, uh, the jitter matrix there. 
So it's a nice way he starts to basically he's taking some statistics. He's doing a couple of statistics things here. He knows that there's a total of uh, 307,000 pixels. He divides that by a maximum value. And so he's basically counting the number of white pixels. Okay, so out of the whole frame, uh, how many are white pixels are there? You know, pixel value 255. So you can see as I move my hand, that number goes up higher and higher. To give me like a real, you know, big number. And then he's got a scale factor here. And he's got a couple of different parameters, curve, scale, offset, and then the output. So basically it gives you some controls over, you know, the, the number. Is it a logarithmic scale? Is it, you know, the, the overall, um, you know, how many pixels need to change? You know, just some, some basic ways of tweaking. And that ultimately, you scale it into a, a set of values that are going to be sent to your live remote. And if you've seen any of the other tutorials, uh, he's using the typical uh, target device, target parameter uh, pickers here. I think he is probably, if I go down here, yep, he's using the Max for Live API uh, encapsulated things. So that's uh, readily available. So that's kind of what's going on. And let's see, if I uh, switch this back to presentation mode, you can kind of see how it all comes together. And that's what shows up in the Max window, uh, excuse me, in the actual live window. Of course, with my added little preview windows there. Really, really fun little device. Shows you the basics of uh, of jitter, and also shows you some you know kind of really cool ways to uh, actually modulate parameters with jitter down here. It's a MIDI device, so I can't throw it on my audio track. So <laughs> I kind of have two windows open at once here. My device, uh, if I let's see, I'll close this, and I'll say save. Hopefully, I won't lose everything. It's actually over here on this other, uh, and I probably have. Yeah, I messed up. Uh, frame capturing is a little bit wacky sometimes. Uh, I basically have you know, kind of lost my device. Okay, here it is back again. So here it is. It lives over on this MIDI track, this MIDI track, and it controls, you know, basically any device. You see, it's just the uh, you know one of the auto filters down here. Uh, so you can have you know one track changing devices over on another track. That's all part of the live API. Uh, you should tune into one of the other tutorials where we talk a little bit more about that. But it's a fantastic fun device. Uh, it's a great way to get you know into the basics of Jitter using the JitQt grab uh, object to kind of see what's going on in some of your uh, matrix operations. Lots and lots of fun. And uh, it's yet another way to, to uh, operate on your uh, live sets interactively. Okay, so until next time, this is Eric for Learn Max. Hope you learned something. And remember, Visit those guys over at uh, maxforlive.com. Fantastic, fantastic devices over there. And remember to subscribe here so you hear about it. Uh, you hear about it soon. <laughs> All right, take care. Have a good night. Bye.